everybody, this is Rosie and Adrian. This is our cat, Adrian. She's very sweet. In yesterday's video, I shared how my parents shared with me the stories of peacemakers in my family tree, specifically Alberto and Uncle Dick, and how I became very interested in the work that Cesar Chavez did. When we then studied more peacemakers and we read book after book and then we found this one. Let's see if I can hold it and the cat at the same time. <laughs> so when I was 16, I read A Persistent Peace by John Deere. I was super impressed because he is a priest and even though I was attending a Methodist church at the time, I am Catholic and I knew that priests were really cool. Also, he's living such a bold, adventurous life for the sake of peace and justice, so I really admired him for that. By virtue of his upbringing, he could be living a very fancy and protected life, but instead he endures a lot of suffering for the sake of liberating the oppressed. After reading this book, I immediately looked up his speaking schedule and found out that he was going to be only two hours away from me in Cincinnati that very evening. I had just gotten my driver's license and so I told my parents that I was going to drive the car to Cincinnati right after school. My dad volunteered to go along, which is good because I had actually never driven in Cincinnati traffic before. I sat in the front row in a big auditorium and Sister Andrea Coverman introduced him. I loved her right away. She actually works for Pache Bene Campaign on Violence. She's on the board. I thought that Father John was going to be very sedate and somber, but actually he's very enthusiastic. Whoop, um... Adrian, Adrian! Oh, okay, I have a different cat now. This is Samantha. We call her New New. Um, Adrian got a little tired of sitting and listening. So <laughs> um, anyway, it was an extremely inspiring presentation. And at the end, he opened up for questions. I asked what I could do as a 16 year old for the cause of nonviolence. John said that the first thing that I should do is get friends in the movement. It seemed daunting. <laughs> My twin sister and I had a lot of friends when we were kids, but as teens, our peer friendships had become casualties of the culture wars. John pointed vaguely to some people around me and then said I should be friends with them. Okay, bye Nunu. Okay, I'm on my own now. <laughs> um, Afterwards, Sister Tracy Kemi came up to me and invited me to a dinner at the Visitation House of Sisters of Charity Cincinnati. I couldn't make it for a weeknight dinner because I live so far away. On the other hand, I knew John said that I should get friends in the movement. And since he had bothered to answer my question, I figured that I owed it to him to try and take his advice. So a month later, I mustered up the courage and I emailed Sister Tracy and asked her if I could stay with her and the sisters for a long weekend. It was the best weekend ever. I shadowed several sisters at work and I talked and laughed with them over really good home cooked meals. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> I got to march with them and our friends during March for Our Lives, which was very important for me as a Gen Zer. I've returned to Cincinnati to see them many times since. One day, Sister Louise Lears was showing me around their house and I saw a beautiful painting that was done by Liz McAllister in Louise's room. I got really excited because I love Liz McAllister and Louise explained to me that she had known Liz at Jonah House and that they were still friends. I asked her for Liz's address because I was writing a thank you letter to Liz for all of her work in the peace movement. And I didn't really know where to mail it, so Louise said that she'd get an address for me. On April 5th, that was the day before I was going to mail the letter. I googled Liz just to see if anything new, relevant would come up that I should also write about. This was actually the day after the Kings Bay Plowshares action. They had been symbolically disarming nuclear weapons. I immediately knew that I had to become a supporter and so I recopied my letter to Liz on a series of postcards that I sent to the jail. And I also wrote to the other six activists. Wow, I can hardly explain how much all of this has meant to me. Um, here are the postcards I received. I got like a lot of them. <laughs> they were so nice and they wrote me a lot. Um, 
everyone is packed with a lot of love, encouragement, and honesty. And I just feel so honored to know them. I grew really close to Claire Grady and after she was out on bail, my mom and sister and I visited her and her family in Ithaca. We met lots of inspirational Grady's and we really had a wonderful time. We did a lot of normal things, hiking, working together in the garden, cooking great vegan meals together in her kitchen. And so I felt right at home. Yet all the while she was teaching us and giving us insights into nonviolence. She was also interacting with her neighbors in really great ways. This was life changing for me because even though Claire didn't attend the finest prep schools or write tons and tons of books, she is still doing so much for peace. I was invited to hearings and the trial in Georgia. I couldn't have imagined what awaited me, the atmosphere of so much love, steely resolve and speaking truth to power. I, I made so many new friends and I love them all. Liz has actually now been sentenced, but my other friends, Carmen, Martha, Mark, Patrick, Claire, and Steve are awaiting sentencing. We are still very prayerful because there's a lot more to endure and much more to proclaim. As Father Steve says, nuclear weapons will not go away by themselves. I am so honored to, in my really small way, declare alongside this community that our allegiance must not be to Lord Nuke, but rather to the Creator. Through all of this, I continue to be strengthened and led by the excellent books and teachings of John Deere, Veronica Pelicaric, Rivera Sun, Ken Buttigan, Daniel Berrigan, and more. The Sisters of Charity of Cincinnati have proven to be true friends throughout the years. I love you guys, and I love meeting regularly with Tracy and other young ladies via Zoom. I'm also really grateful for my new church home, St. Paul's Catholic Church, and for my school, the University of Kentucky, where my anthropology and honors professors are willing and ready to dialogue about my Catholic faith and how that intersects with hope for peace for our world. I'm also grateful for my family and how we still drink our cups of tea and discuss many books on nonviolence. Thank you all for your support of Pache Bene, which has been pivotal in my life and in the lives of many. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.